this noise, I'm sure it's not great. I think I'll start again. That was like an Apache helicopter. Gosh. <laughs> Okay, how's it going everyone? Um, this is like my 10th take because I keep getting this interrupted rudely. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, today's video, I am going to give you a, a workout today. We're, I'm going to give you something that you can use because I know not all of you are back in the gym. So I thought I would give you another dumbbell workout that you can do at home. Today, it's just dumbbell only, nothing else. And what's going to be fun about this is I'm only using one weight because the last one I did, I used different weights. I know not all of you have different dumbbells, so I'm going to use one weight. And um, you can pretty much do this workout with just one dumbbell. However, two will be perfect. But I'll give you alternatives. If you have a resistant band, that will be awesome. You don't need one, but if you do, that will be awesome because then you can make it slightly hard. Well, you can make the workout harder because if the weight is not heavy enough, you want to add a bit more resistance getting progressive overload, but that's not a problem. I'll give you more options. Probably do a voiceover because of the music. And I need to get paid, no, joking. Uh, the music is too loud in the gym, so a voiceover just makes more sense. Uh, so yeah, I thought this is me giving back for all of you that watch my videos and like my videos. It's time for me to give you something, so a nice workout that you can do at home or outside. So make sure, if you enjoy this video, leave a thumbs up because that helps me out massively. Trust me on this. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe as I'm being uh, interrupted again. Let's just get straight to the video. I'm done. And before we start the workout, as always, we will start with a warm up and prep before the session. Also, just a quick reminder that the entire workout is written in the description box. So the first exercise will be a narrow stance goblet squat. The aim for this exercise is to focus more on your quads, hence why I'm purposely not going ass to grass to keep the tension on my quads. Also pay close attention to the tempo as this is vital and changes each set. At the top of the squat, as I always say, you want to make sure to squeeze the muscle like it owes you money. This applies to every exercise too. Once you completed all 10 reps, then drop the weight down and go straight into more squats with a three second eccentric and two second concentric tempo. This is to make sure we are really overloading the muscle by putting it under as much tension as possible, as just using the dumbbell for some isn't enough and performing this superset is a great way for progressive overload. What's great is you can also slow down the tempo even more to force the muscle to work harder. Quick note, I am using two 25 kilo dumbbells to perform every single one of these exercises.
Next up is the dumbbell deficit push-up. Using a dumbbell increases the range of motion and with a varied tempo each set, this is a great method for progressive overload and really putting the muscle under as much tension as possible for longer. Again, note the tempo given as it also varies. Here's a tip, squeeze the handle of the dumbbell as hard as you can before performing the push-up. This will really engage your chest when performing each rep. Try and avoid locking out at the top to keep constant tension. On set two, this will change to a decline push-up. The third superset will be a Zotman curl, which is a great bicep and forearm exercise, making sure to slow it down, especially doing the eccentric when all the dumbbell wants to do is to pull your arms down. Try and fight that as much as possible. Make sure to keep your elbows in and make sure to keep your biceps under constant tension. Just like the push-ups, you can also apply the same principle by squeezing the dumbbell handle before you curl up and keep that contraction even when you rotate the dumbbell in a pronated position. Okay, just a quick, quick intermission as you're enjoying this incredibly awesome video. Just to give a shout out to my sponsor, Whoop. They're the fitness tracker I use. You must know this by now and if you watch this, my, all my videos. So it's a fitness track I use to track my sleep, my recovery, um, my strain level. So if I think I'm pushing myself hard or not, if I'm not. Um, also, it has some awesome features that actually, it has a, not just a strain coach, but a sleep coach. So if you're trying to get optimal sleep for every single day, it has that as well. I also have a team called Break The Mold, so get involved. And if you use my code OBI, you get 15% off your membership because who doesn't like a discount and then you can join the Woo team. So get involved. Back to the video. The next superset is the Renegade Rose. I absolutely love this exercise for core strength, shoulder strength and shoulder stability. This exercise, you want to make sure to keep your body's movement from side to side to a minimum when you row up. Make sure to take a deep breath in and brace your core, similar to what you would do when performing a heavy squat. You can also use one dumbbell to perform this if you find doing two very challenging. Next exercise is the banded sumos. Now, if you don't have bands, that's absolutely fine. You can perform this without them. I'm using a band to add more resistance, especially during the concentric phase, making your hamstrings and glutes work even harder. Try and go below parallel because this is more a hamstring and glute dominant exercise. This is what we want to focus on during the concentric. So at the bottom of the squat, make sure to drive up with your hammies and your glutes. Again, pay attention to the tempo provided. What's great is you can use a harder resistant band to make this even more challenging. Make sure to contract your glutes at the top of the movement before you descend down to the squat. The next superset will be a seated dumbbell Z press. This is a great exercise for your delts and by seating down on the floor, it takes away your legs and stops you using momentum to get the weight up, meaning your delts will have to do a lot more work. This is also a great exercise to force you to keep your core engaged. A very simple way to explain engaging your core, what you would need to do is take a deep breath in and squeeze your abs before you perform the exercise. Third superset will be a triceps plank press. This is a great exercise for your triceps and actually much harder than it looks. Although it looks like a push-up, the emphasis on performing the exercise this way is your triceps. Nice and controlled on the way down to the floor and also when at the top of the movement, try and contract your triceps and hold that contraction when going back down. An easier alternative if you struggle to press up is to go up one arm at a time as shown in the video. Next exercise starts with a Bulgarian split squat. This is probably one of my favorite exercises for leg development. 
keeping your chest up and bracing your core before performing the exercise. Also making sure to focus on a nice controlled tempo when lunging down. Make sure to keep your quads engaged before performing the exercise at the bottom of the movement. Use your glutes and hamstrings to come back up and avoid locking out your knees at the top. If you pay close attention, you would notice how my quads are engaged before I lunge down. A tip for performing this exercise, if you are finding that you are unstable when you perform this movement, you want to make sure you brace your core. Another tip is when coming back up, drive the floor down and away from you or think about trying to drive your feet into the ground. Superset the Bulgarian split squats with chest floor presses. I like doing the floor presses as it stops you overextending at the bottom, which can help prevent injuries. And it also keeps the focus on your chest. When at the top of the press, make sure you squeeze your chest as hard as you can and hold that contraction as much as you can when going back down. Again, you can, if you only have one dumbbell, perform the exercise unilaterally. The third superset will be an unsupported bent over row, making sure to engage your core and lats before performing the movement. Because this is unsupported, again, it forces you to really engage your core and makes the exercise even harder. Then adding a much slower tempo makes it even better. Make sure when you row up to squeeze your lats as hard as you can and keep that contraction even when going back down. And of course, it wouldn't be a workout without a tasty EMOM to finish. This is a fun EMOM and I'm sure you would like this one. It's a 12 minute EMOM of 12 alternating hand clusters, 12 alternating snatches, 12 overhead lunges, and 12 butterfly sit-ups. So an EMOM means every minute on the minute. So for the first minute, perform the hand clusters within one minute, which ideally should take you about 30, maybe 40 seconds and rest for the remainder time. And then on the second minute, for 12 reps, perform the dumbbell snatches. The third minute, you will be doing the overhead lunges. And the fourth minute, you will be doing the butterfly sit-ups. So you keep doing this for 12 minutes. So basically three rounds. Remember, you need at least 20 seconds rest. So if your rest is about 10 seconds, then scale the reps down. The beauty about EMOMs is you can add more time if you wanted to. So you can make this a 16 minute EMOM or a 20 minute EMOM. And also if you find that the reps are too easy, then you can add more reps each exercise. That's the fun part about this conditioning. You can alter it to your ability. <laughs> it was fun, I enjoyed this training. It was actually a lot harder than it should have been. Well, I never, I always get surprised how hard my workouts are which is weird, um, seeing that I should be used to it by now, but I never do. And I guess it's the sadist in me that likes to make my workouts even harder. So I hope you enjoy it. Remember with the EMOM, like I said in the video, you can make it longer. If you want it to be 20 minutes, that's fine. You can make it as long as you want. Remember the first two laps, laps rounds will always feel comfortable. It's when you get to that last two that it starts to slightly hurt. Another thing is you can increase the reps. What I like to do in an EMOM is if after the two rounds, I think it's still too comfortable. I'm, I'm probably finishing in about 30 seconds. I like to add a rep extra on every single exercise. So you could start with the reps I've given, then add more and add more and add more to make it harder. And what you could do on the last round, this is probably really brutal, is keep going for the whole minute. On the first exercise, second, third and fourth. That will really hurt. Hope you enjoyed the workout. 
and uh, don't forget to leave a thumbs up for me that will be absolutely awesome like I said it helps me out massively don't forget to subscribe share with your friends why not have an awesome week peace out peace <laughs> Ooh.